Hi, this is Jessica here, and today we're talking with PRT guru, Peter Muller, and he's going to tell us about four different PRT systems. And those four different systems are to get there, a Vectis, Ultra, and Skyweb Express. Now, Peter, are all these systems um, U.S.? Um, actually, that's a good question. No, they're not. To get there is Dutch. Uh, Vectis is a combination. They're a British company owned by Koreans and operating in Sweden. So that's kind of interesting. Then Ultra is uh, British and Skywave Express, the last one we're going to deal with, is the only US one. It's based out of Minnesota. So to start off with, to, to get there, they have a variety of different vehicles carrying anywhere from four up to 20 passengers. Uh, typically, their operating speeds are up to 25 miles an hour. They state that they can handle up to 2,500 passengers per hour per direction, which is how transit engineers measure passengers. Um, and they've been operating with vehicles in the public domain since about 1997. Now, I remember in our last video you said something about how pods can only hold up to six people. You say this one can hold up to 20. Yes, so the, these guys have got various systems. Some of them are not really PRT. They're what's called group rapid transit. And those GRT systems can hold more people uh, per vehicle. Uh, this picture here shows their uh, PRT vehicle that's under construction for the new city of Mazdar in the UAE. This system at Mazdar is ultimately planned for about 100 stations and a few thousand vehicles. It's very stylish. It's really cool. This, this I believe, is the upgraded vehicle with leather seats and everything. Uh, Vectis is the one that's uh, British but owned by Koreans, and, and this is their test track in Sweden. They're a subsidiary of a very large uh, PR, um, steel manufacturer, Korean steel manufacturer, called POSCO. And um, their vehicle is designed for four passengers, and it gets power off a third rail. Now, that looks a lot like train tracks to me, so is it just like a mini train or...? Well, not really. These tracks are much smaller than train tracks and, and the whole concept is different than train tracks. Uh, they don't have switches on the tracks. The vehicles actually switch to decide which way they're going. And of course, the vehicles are much smaller than train vehicles and they all run independently. And we'll show a little movie of this in a little bit. Um, here's uh, some close-ups of the vehicle and um, passenger in the vehicle, and here uh, is the movie. This is in Uppsala, north of Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. And this is a vehicle running around their test track. It runs it up to 25 miles an hour. Um, the track has a, a guideway leading off to the station. Here you can see a vehicle going into the station. The station they built is just a small station. Uh, it's a one vehicle station. But there's no reason why that can't be expanded. And in fact, that's one of the advantages of PRT, is that you can build big stations or small stations depending on the capacity you need at the particular station. With a train, you have to build a big station every time because the station has to be as long as your longest train. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing here is actually the motors are in the rail. It's kind of interesting. Those steel things are the linear induction motors. All the vehicle has on it is a big magnet. And the motors pull the magnet along. And they also, they not only pull it along, they speed it up and slow it down. Here you see how the switch operates. See the little wheel comes down, and then the rail pulls that wheel to one side or the other side. So we're going to talk about the Ultra system. Uh, this is a British system currently being installed at Heathrow Airport. And um, it's operating under test at Heathrow Airport. Will is planned to be carrying passengers by the end of the year. It's a four-passenger vehicle, although the Heathrow uh, version of this vehicle has been slightly expanded to have bench seats so that you can get in a family of six, two adults and four kids. Also runs at a maximum speed of 25 miles an hour, but it uses batteries. And this is how uh, it looks. You see the picture on the right, it's got bucket seats with the armrest. The picture on the left is the Heathrow version with the bench seats. Here's what Heathrow is planning to do this year. They're uh, getting 18 vehicles up and running with three kilometers, that's about two miles of track. By 2012, they're planning to have um, 
30 miles of track and about 400 vehicles running all over Heathrow. Oh. So that's Granted uh, it goes well. Assuming it goes well, yes, yes. Obviously they won't move ahead if it doesn't. We're going to look at a little video of the Heathrow system here. And this is actually a video of the test track. And these vehicles are um, a model before um, the production model they're producing at Heathrow. So the Heathrow model looks a little more modern. Here he is choosing the station he's going to. Here they get on the vehicle. Um, and you'll notice that the wheelchair, the pushchair rolls on, rolls off. So this is very convenient for airport use if you're putting baggage. The little boy is driving, and that's really what it takes. And off they go. Now, as I said before, this is a battery-powered system. It, it uh, runs with rubber tires uh, on the road. It's almost like a car. Um, runs at speeds up to 25 miles an hour. Can run at headways down to three seconds. That means you could have a vehicle coming by every three seconds, which gives you quite good capacity. Here's the overhead portion of the guideway. This is a very light infrastructure. They actually erected this overhead piece of guideway in something like four hours. It was pretty amazing from, from just having the foundations to being ready to drive vehicles over it. Now we're going to look at um, Skyweb Express. And uh, this has a smaller vehicle. It's, it's quite a bit lighter than the others. It holds three passengers. And they claim it can do 40 miles an hour, but they haven't yet proven that because they don't have a long enough test track. It also gets power off the rail. So we've seen anywhere from four to 20 passengers in a pod. Why, why did Skyweb decide on three? Well, they, their analysis showed, and it's true, that, that um, most automobiles drive around with one person in them. So why make a vehicle that really holds much more than one person? But you need to because you need to accommodate somebody in a wheelchair with an attendant or a small family or so on. They decided, and another name for the system is Taxi 2000, they decided that what they wanted to do was make something equivalent to the back seat of a taxi. So this vehicle is modeled on the back seat of a taxi. Um, but without the rude cab driver. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this picture shows a, a, a family with a, a push chair and a baby. Um, and also look at the station. You can see the vehicles going past the other vehicles in the station. Um, this is a nice picture. I like this from an environmental standpoint because it shows how you could integrate in this photograph or this rendering personal rapid transit, light rail, shared bicycles, city cars, foldable scooters, and then they've got self-guided cars on the road, which that technology isn't quite here yet. But just a glance at what it could look like in yes, the future. Yes, and it's all powered by solar electricity. So it, I, I think it's a nice picture. Um, we'll look at a, a short video of, of how you get on and off these uh, Skyweb Express vehicles. So this is on their test facility, and, and here's the vehicle. The door is kind of the whole roof and, and both sides slide back and open. It's, so you can enter it from both sides, which is kind of, kind of a neat capability. You can see he's sitting in the middle of the seat there. He presses the door closed button. And Hopefully then, you sat down before it starts yeah, closing. <laughs> yeah. And then he's just reading his newspaper. You know, so you don't have to do anything while you're riding these vehicles. Get to the other end and he's answering his phone. Now what's the possibility of it ending up at the wrong station? Uh, almost zero. Okay. Uh, these, these vehicles are going to be extremely reliable. And they've already proven reliability. As I said, the antiquated Morgantown PRT system I was talking to you before has, uh, operates at, at transit level of service A in terms of reliability. It's as reliable as transit ever gets. So uh, that's all for today. All right. Well, you can contact the, guru, the PRT guru, Peter Muller, um, at Twitter, at PRT guru, or Email him at info at prt.com, or prtconsulting.com. <laughs> Our cat's in the way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, or you can go to his website always at www.prconsulting.com. And we'll talk to you next time. So long.